But anyway, we're now in a hospital that it's clearly not a hotel room. Not even like a hotel room, just looks like one of his like living rooms. Well yeah, he is then wrapped his face is wrapped up partially. He has a on top of the bandages, he has a a breather mask <laughs> and a nose tube that's just kind of like laying on his face. And yeah. the doctor and the nurse they're all like, "Oh my god, this dude is going to die." Uh major brain just, trauma. Yeah, so he many is. bad things, internal bleeding and everything, he's not going to make it. And then yeah. suddenly the next day happens, he's like, I'm going to take off the, the tube, which is supposed to be in the cast, I don't know why it's over the cast. Like, that, that's just something that really bothered me and I remembered the most, despite all the alcohol that I drank that night. It was <laughs> a, uh, it was an IV to administer clouds. Because it was overcast. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> um... So then he, he leaves while bleeding, goes home. No, he and... teleports out. Oh yeah. He just fades out of existence and then is off, like back in his home, covered in blood. And you'd think like he'd be fully recovered by then because you know he's able to stand up and everything, but nope, he can still just bleed. still bleed. <laughs> and he gets home and his wife's still there bleed. and she's telling him he needs to have like take these pills and everything, and they have. Dirty shower sex while she's wearing a dress and he's naked and damn, that was a nice butt. He had a, he had a, oh yeah, we forgot to mention Neil Breen's ass is in every movie he's ever made. Why? When you say ass, do you mean just like a shot of his ass, or like, like his bare naked ass? Like a shot of his bare naked ass. It's like the room, Paul. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. The, the, I know. <laughs> I don't know which one, but I know in one of the Neil Breen films. You can straight up see just the back of his balls. Oh. Just clear as day. Like, that's one of my questions, too. Like, why does he try to act like he's 31 and, you know, not admit he's 60 years old or something? That's like an oddly specific age to claim that he is. I don't know. I think Th that's when your testicles start to, like, you know, spread and, you know become very elastic well, well, or, or maybe not you what know, about maybe not that what about that year <laughs> makes that happen <laughs> why is it's like is this testicles something? age like fine wine paul you, you reach up and grab them and like oh these grapes I are right. like i did i did learn about this in health class <laughs> that's funny because i was actually teaching health this week did you teach her about Neil Breen? I told kids what happens to your balls when you turn Neil Breen. But so 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 the important part is that one of the nurses one one of the nurses that was treating Neil Breen, like she has she has a notebook that I think just happens to fall out and it lands on this page, and the page says, "It's a magical day." <laughs> what? <laughs> it's supposed to be the girl. It's like... supposed to be the girl from his childhood. And apparently, like they recognize one another. Like one, he didn't age well. Two, she did. <laughs> um, so this is the end of the world. Here we are, the end of the world. As we know it. <laughs> Anyone feeling fine? Not this me. is what happens when you believe in a, a flat Earth. <laughs> <laughs> There's an end. What are you trying to say? It just like, stops. No, it makes sense. Look at their eyeballs. They're or, not so or rather, round. I guess it's a C. Is it? Wait, what is it? What? What is the? Uh, what do they actually believe what is at the end of the earth? That but like this is, earth. so the whole point of this was that Heartless were getting to the hearts of the world. So this is the embodiment of oh, No, I'm not asking about hearts. Kingdom Hearts. I get that. I'm, I'm trying to understand Flat Earth. Like, oh. the reality. No, it's a, a giant flat plate on top of a turtle. Oh, okay, yeah, no. So, so continue on with Kingdom Hearts. What was that? So in Faithful <laughs> Findings... <laughs> Um, what, um, shit. Okay, so, I just want to continue on with Fitful because I did promise to, you know, rec like, say that I recognize all this. Oh, yeah, you're going to be going through, like, different... Yeah. This, this is annoying. So, while we're going through this, I think it's appropriate to talk about all this, the jangles. Um, <laughs> he starts writing on his laptop, but, like, what's funny is when he's talk, like, when he's says something, he stops typing, and then when he stops talking, he starts making these unnecessary fast typing noises. <laughs> I gotta find the, like, the, 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 the hacks in order to hack the government. 
<laughs> but then, but then, very often you'll you'll see. What the fuck was that? Very often you will see him, like he's obviously not typing. But for one thing, you can always tell when uh, when the audio is being overdubbed be because you can you can hear the different room noise sounds. So I, I, at one point, I specifically heard. Like, it's clearly, the, 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 the camera angle changes, but the room noise doesn't change. And you hear typing happening, but nobody's doing any typing. <laughs> He's just, like, staring at the computer. Okay, so back to the plot. So, at this point, he's back home. Uh, Cheryl Sexless's wife. Um, Starts he... taking the pills. No, no, he, yeah, he, he asks his wife for the pills, then immediately says... <laughs> I don't need these pills. She goes to the toilet, dumps them out. The wife is hungry for the pills and reaches into the toilet and starts eating the pills. Yeah, so like what? rather than yeah, rather than like tell, <laughs> not, rather than confronting him saying, "You know you have to take these pills right now." She decides to just take them as a way to say, "Oh, I just, you know, he he did take them or something." And then just gets so addicted to them. I no, I think I think she was already addicted to the pills by the time by the time she's fishing them out of the toilet. There's there's a lot of character development that happens off screen. I mean, obviously, those are the best moments when they're off screen, because <laughs> that's when we really know. Um, Show don't tell. Who? What does that even mean? I don't know. I'm Neil Breen. Let's go All climb right. up the hill. <laughs> All right. So the uh, neighbors they keep on having these weird scenes where it's like one's yelling at the other, and. Uh, like, sometimes it's the husband's fault, sometimes it's the uh, wife's fault, and then it keeps switching who is angry and who's being apologetic. Meanwhile, the do they have a daughter who is... Uh, I don't know why sh they're angry at her. She's. We'll get to her later, because there's an interesting character plot with that, um, with the daughter. Yeah. So, overall, what, who Neil Breen is is one of the greatest writers of all time, who, instead of writing his book... He is secretly hacking everything. He's hacking the government. He's hacking the banks. He's hacking the sack. He's hacking everything. Yes. And we're constantly hit with these interludes of him, um, like this person with black feet, uh, black suit and uh, leather shoes walking around the house. Yeah. They eventually have a barbecue where the nurse, for some reason, is there. They... Neil, um, this is this no, this is the scene where the book falls out of her pocket at the barbecue. Oh yes, now, this yes. This isn't yes. like a pocket-sized book either. Yeah, no. Yeah, she's like, just she just, she just carries it. this around, and she hasn't written anything else in it. She's only ever written it's a magical day. I mean, come on, let's think about it. She's probably waiting for that magical day to happen, so it makes sense for it to you know to appear like to bring it around for this moment to happen again. But so Wait, so Neil Breen. She's thinking Neil Breen here. Uh, she comes. He uh, the nurse comes with to the barbecue with her fiance as well, but oh, immediately yeah. while his like, wife is popping pills. Um, but but so the best friend, the drunk best friend, starts basically like sexually assaulting Neil Breen's wife as she's like doing barbecue stuff, and drops all the chicken, and yeah. drops all of the chicken. And she basically says, like, fuck off, you stupid asshole. D you're always doing shit like this. Get out of my face. Like, this was the only time where she actually said something, like, did something right, whereas the whole pill situation, that was, you know, <laughs> uh, contradicting? I don't know. <laughs> but then, like, Neil Breen is holding the hand, like, they, they, this is, this, this is when they realized that they were childhood best friends who shared a magical mushroom moment in the middle of the field. <laughs> See, now, this is where I think would be really important. Like, why does it have to be chicken? Why why not, like, grow portobello mushrooms? And, like, he drops the mushrooms. And oh, shit. <laughs> that would have made more sense. John, you're a genius. <laughs> I'm brainious. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Alright. So. Alright, so then there's a scene where... Neil Breen tells his wife that he is hacking everything, and 
says, uh, wife, I can tell you this, but promise not to tell anyone. Wife gets drunk and immediately starts telling someone over the phone that's never disclosed. Oh, um, no, no, no. No, we forgot to mention, Neil Breen's going to a psycho- uh, psychologist this whole time. Oh, my God. He's going to two... He's going to a psychologist and a psychiatrist. <laughs> oh, my God. That really helps, like, explain the difference. Oh, um, yeah. There's a male psychiatrist who's, like, sent, constantly just says, you're the best writer ever. You should be just writing your book. And then there's a creepy old lady who doesn't seem to have eyes. <laughs> but so... And, and the, the male doctor they only ever meet in like basically a boardroom where they're sitting across like like i know i know paul has seen citizen kane have you have you got other guys seen citizen kane yeah remember the part where there's a montage of of kane and his wife yeah over the years and their and their table gets larger and larger yeah no it's yeah, to symbolize <laughs> them distancing from the spells this longer. table yeah. is as large as it is at the end of that scene cuz it's a symbol for how distant they are it's smart movie making it's but more, it's more of like you know oh he's doing Orson Welles he's doing very Orson Welles he's doing a very Orson yeah, Welles job a real fucking modern day Orson Welles we got in this this character Orson Welles um 